Hello everyone, uh, mostly to metric students. Um, so today I'm going to be looking at geography question paper, best question paper that I've done in the past, um, 2016, um, June, to be specific. So um, let's look at this question paper. So we have 2.1, we're going to be looking at 2.1. So it says study figure 2.1 based on stages in the development of a mid-life cycle. So we're going to be looking at this figure that is showing mid-life cyclone or this answer. Okay, yes. So figure 2.1 stages in the development of a mid-life cyclone. So this figure is showing us the stages of development of a mid size of a mid-latitude cyclone. Okay, yes. So let's have our very first question says 2.1.1. Which line of latitude 20 degrees south, 50 degrees south, or 80 degrees south of the equator is represented by line A? Let's go and check line A. Okay. Mind you, we have 20 degrees south, 60 degrees south, and 80 degrees south. Line A, okay? Line A, you can see that it's also known as a polar front. Okay. Yes, this is by two masses, as you can see that we have our westerly winds meeting with what meeting with these polar easterlies okay yes with the easterly winds so because of that convergence okay yes of those winds that makes a front okay yes and that's also that's a that's a low pressure belt okay yes so you know this is where by the midlife circles form okay in the polar front on that 60 degrees south of the equator as well as 60 degrees not of the equator. So meaning that the answer, our answer here will be 60 degrees south. Okay. Yes. This is our answer. Okay. Yes. Let me try to erase this. Um, okay. Yes. So yeah. So 60 degrees south. So that's it. Okay. Yes. Lines of latitude represented by A. This is by 60 degrees south of the equator by the midlife cyclones form. I hope you get it, okay? I hope you all get it, guys. So let's move to 2.1.2. Is a mid latitude cyclone a high pressure system or a low pressure system? Straightforward. A mid latitude cyclone is a low pressure system. Why it is a low pressure system? I've explained to you. As you can see here, here we have um, um, these winds, right? These two winds, okay? Westerly, tropical westerlies, as well as the easterlies coming together to meet. When they meet, you know that two different MSs when they meet, the cold air or the cold MS as well as the warm MS, when they meet, they will form a front. A front is being formed by um, the cold air. You know that the cold air is very, very dense and dry. It's going to get underneath to force the warm air to rise because the warm air which is from the tropical westerlies is warm and it has humidity okay yes so it's going to go it's going to rise and form clouds so that causes a low pressure so that's why we say a mid light cyclone it's a low pressure system and that's how it goes i hope you all get it guys so it's a low pressure system so let's move to 2.1.3 describe the circulation of the air as shown in this in stage two so let's describe the circulation of air as shown in stage two let's go to stage two so as you can see this stage two of this air this airflow okay so this is the clockwise airflow okay yes so it's a clockwise airflow let me erase that guys so it's a clockwise airflow uh-huh so it's a clockwise airflow. Don't forget it, guys. I'll note it down. So when describing the air circulation at figure two, that's a clockwise airflow because now it's the, 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 the air, the MS is start to, to rotate or to move in a clockwise direction. Okay? Yes, you know that in the southern hemisphere, they move in a clockwise direction, but in the northern hemisphere, they move, or the MSs or the air circulation moves in an anti clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere. So let's move to 2.1.4. It says, name the zone of separation between the westerly and easterly winds. So let's name the 
zone of separation between these westerly and easterly winds. The zone of separation, you can see that we have our westerly winds, number one, and number two, we have our easterly winds, okay? Yes, let me try to erase that. And we have our easterly winds, let me use blue, and we have our easterly winds, okay? Yes, underneath. So, the zone that is between these two types of winds or two different emphases is a polar front. So, that zone is a polar front that um, separates them, I can say, right? Yes, so it's a polar front, very correct. Let's move to 2.1.5. Name the stage of development during which front forms. Okay, so you know that we have three types of stages in the um, development of the midlife cyclone. So we have the initial stage, we have the mature stage, and we have occlusion stage. Okay, yes. Now, which stage whereby the development of um, or whereby the fronts form? Which stage? It's the mature stage. Okay, yes, it's the mature stage. Okay, I'm just going to write a mature stage here. Mature, okay, yes. I'm not going to write everything, guys, so it's going to be mature. Mature stage, okay? Try to listen my answers, I told you guys. I'm not going to write down. So, mature stage, right? Let's move to 2.1.6. So, it's mature stage. Um, yeah, it's mature stage. I thought there was something that is going to say this underline. Okay. So, so define the term cold front. So let's define the cold front. The so cold front is a section, okay, of a cold moving air. Okay, so a, a cold front is a listen careful is a section of a cold air of a cold moving air. So sorry, of a cold moving air. That's a cold front. Okay, yes. Which stage? one two three or four shows the midlife cyclone in the occlusion stage so which stage one stage one two or three or four that shows um the occlusion stage it's stage four okay stage four as you can see that the warm front now has taken over or has taken over the the cold front okay yes meaning that now in the system or in the occlusion stages by also a cold front can also take over a warm front as well as the warm front can take over the cold front meaning that in this stage now the one that is represented in this diagram this is a warm front of occlusion as you can see that the warm front has taken over the the cold front meaning that in this situation now the the temperatures of the system changes before um, before um, meaning that behind the system and and in front of the system so behind the system behind the system there will be um, warmer temperatures than um, in front of the system right yes it's going to be like that so the occlusion stage it's, it's stage four right yes to answer the question so it's stage it's stage four okay yes so that's the occlusion stage 2.1.8 says give one point of evidence in the diagram that indicates that this cyclone occurs in the southern hemisphere. I told you guys that this is happening in the southern hemisphere. Number one, let me erase everything so that I can explain effectively. Number one, um, I hope you can see that guys, it is rotating or the cyclone is ro the midline cyclone is rotating in a in a clockwise direction okay yes as you can see clockwise direction clockwise direction clockwise direction right mm -hmm. in a clockwise like a clock that's why it's in the southern hemisphere why if it if it if it is well if it was on the northern hemisphere it's, it was going to rotate in an anti-clockwise direction okay yes but now this proves that it's in a um it's occurring in the um, southern hemisphere, meaning that it's rotating in a clockwise direction. Um, the other thing that you have to consider here are the westerly winds, you can as well as the easterly winds, where they meet. 
Okay, yes, on the situation of these waves. Look, the polar front, yes, we also have 60 degrees north of the equator as well as south of the equator. But now, this is south of the equator. The reason why I say south of the equator, the westerlies are situated in the north part of the polar front and the easterlies are situated in the south part. As you can see, you have easterlies, south part of the of the polar front, meaning that they come from the south and the westerlies come from the um, um, north. Okay, yes, part of the polar front. But, however, if it was this cyclone was occurring in the northern hemisphere. This is why we're going to say, okay, now the polar front um, is in the northern hemisphere, okay, yes, so 60 degrees north, meaning that the western winds are going to come from the south, okay, and the eastern winds were going to come from the, from the north, okay, if it was on the northern hemisphere, okay, yes, so that, so number one is the reason why we say this is occurring in the southern hemisphere is because of this 60 degrees south of the equator okay yes uh no it's because of the of the of the uh, clockwise movement okay yes and number two it's because of the situation of these winds north uh, western winds come from the north the eastern winds come to, from the south and that's how it goes and that's it guys um yeah let's move give one evidence okay I've answered that one. Yes. So that's it. Okay. Very correct. Okay. Um. Yeah. I hope you know everything down. But if you ever you think um you can revisit the the, the the question and watch again. Okay. Yes. You watch again. You watch again. You must it. Okay. Yes. Uh. Yeah. I'm going to come up with um, many many revision question papers. Stay tuned, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe. Right. Click that red subscribe button for more lesson comments. Have a great day, chance.